What's up, Internet? Um, working on the Cutlass today. So, the S10 we got running. Um, it sounds amazing, but it's also open header, so I gotta take that to an exhaust shop. I'm not good at exhaust, uh, so I'm knowing my limitations getting that done somewhere else. And as you can see, we're not in our garage. Uh, we're at a garage where I am storing the Cutlass. Um, and the big reason the Cutlass is not running is the battery cables are junk. Now, the easiest thing to do is just replace the battery cables. But since I'm replacing them, this is the second or third time I've had to do it because I just buy the cheap AutoZone ones, which are um, copper coated aluminum. So they don't, they don't work that great. And also they corrode very, very easily. So um, the cables are junk. And since I'm replacing them, I'm tired of replacing them. And I want the engine bay to look a little bit better. I'm moving the battery to the trunk. So as you can hear, it's windy out here. Um, like I said, storing it outside. So what are some of the th reasons for moving a battery to the trunk? Um, normally the biggest reason is weight distribution. A battery can be, you know, 50, 60 pounds. And by putting it in the trunk over the drive wheel, it puts more pressure down on that wheel for better traction. Drag racers have been doing it for a long time. Also moves it out of the engine bay, um, a lot of things. So when you're moving it to the trunk, especially for an American car where it's left-hand drive, you're putting some of the weight on the opposite end where the driver is, so you're balancing that weight out a little bit. Um, and there's a lot of options of where you can move the battery. So here in the trunk, probably the best place if this was just a drag car would be moving the battery right back here. It's the furthest back part of the trunk. It'd be far to the right, so it would give the most weight with a fulcrum effect over the axle. But this isn't a pure drag car. I still want to be able to use the trunk because it's mostly a cruiser, so if I want to daily drive it, or yes, when I go to car shows, I want to be able to use the trunk. So I'm moving it up here. This shelf, it was originally for the jack, uh, spare tire, and all that. That way, it's up out of the way, up here. I also have room in the trunk to use everything. And then also, if I want to, I could build a panel right here to close that off to give it a better look. As you can see, this is clearly not a show car right now, but I do want it to look nice. So once you figure out where you want the battery, you'll know approximately how much cable you want. Um, I'm going to run my cable through the car, that way it's away from the elements, it's protected, it's going to be underneath the carpet, um, which is probably the best idea. Make sure you have good insulation, you're keeping it away from any other moving parts, a uh, place that's not going to get rubbed because that's going to be a heavy gauge cable with a lot of power going through it. The second thing you really, really need to learn or be aware of as far as when you're moving your battery to the trunk is what kind of cable you're gonna get because this is a major deal. When you're starting the car, there's a lot of amperage that goes through that battery cable. So you wanna get very good cables. Don't cheap out here. You're gonna see a lot of stuff on Amazon um, and it's not that expensive for a battery relocation kit. Um, you don't wanna use a lot of that because again, that's copper coated aluminum or CCA. Copper coated aluminum is a lot cheaper to manufacture because copper is expensive. So the best thing to do is actually look for welding cable. Welders, they have a lot of current and amperage going through them. So you'll have a lot better flow. You're also gonna to wanna to figure out what is gonna be the best diameter for you. You probably wanna to go to four gauge or bigger. And when I say bigger, I don't mean a bigger number. I actually mean a smaller number because the way wire is, the smaller the number, the bigger the diameter is. So for my cabling, I went with aught gauge, which is pretty, which is zero. They just say aught or double aught gauge, but this is zero. It's already got ends on it. Um, it already has a battery cable in on it and you can leave this cable in on there. I'm actually gonna cut it off because I went with marine style connectors for mine. 
that way I can just put stuff on there with a stud and I can add other circuits on there because I'm going to put a relay for my fuel pump back there so it has power going directly to the fuel pump from the battery. Um, that way I have better fuel flow because I'm having a fuel starvation issue from what I can figure. So again, don't cheap out on your cabling here. This is very, very important. You could put the cheaper cable in there and it might last okay, but at the same time, you could have amperage drops, um, your car could crank slowly, and especially with some of the um, aftermarket fuel injection systems, they like to see a very steady voltage and amperage coming to them. That way, they have good signal, because if they don't have a good 12 volt signal, they won't trigger. And then you're just cranking and cranking and you don't know why your car isn't starting. So let's go mount our battery box back there and we'll talk about the battery box. Okay, again, this is an area where you wanna maybe spend a little bit more money. Most of the battery relocation kits, they come with these cheap plastic boxes with a strap. And those will generally work okay. Uh, if you're drag racing or something like that, there's a possibility of wreckage and you don't want a 50 pound lead acid brick or, you know, absorbent um, glass mat battery come flying at your head. So I'm going with this. It's from GSI. I just dropped the bolt out of it. Um, I did get this off of Amazon. Uh, it's a little bit more expensive than the plastic ones, but it's made out of metal. This one is designed specifically for the battery I'm running. I'm running an Optima Red Top. So this will clamp it down. It's gonna be bolted into the trunk, so it's gonna have some structure to it. So God forbid I get into a wreck, the battery's not going anywhere. On top of that, it looks a little bit nicer. So if I don't build that panel right away, I have something that looks decent other than this weird plastic lunchbox sitting in the back. All right, so you can see, got the battery, box or hold down whatever you want to call it mount it it is in there um, I'm using grade 8 bolts and they go through the body and then there's actually a quarter inch thick piece or maybe it's eighth inch anywhere there's a bar that goes underneath here that goes between the two bolts um, it adds structure but I also needed it because that bolt right there um, actually comes through right on top of the spring perch and I couldn't see it or get to it. So I just welded a nut to the bar and when I bolted it on that side, it lined up over there and I was just able to screw it down from the top. So now we can put the battery in and start running our cables. Okay, so obviously you're gonna have to take out some of your interior if you're gonna run it in the interior, which I suggest you do. So I had put some insulation back up here, not the greatest. And then there's already holes in this entire back panel. It's not one solid piece. So I just found a hole, moved that through. It's gonna come down. Now I need to run it underneath the carpet. And you see I got the speaker wires there. Um, don't wanna run too close to the speaker wires because there could be some RF interference as far as when the charging system and everything's going. But we'll run it down here and then up to the firewall. And let's talk about that little thing okay so that little red thing that you saw on the firewall there's a couple of different ways that you can run the wire through a firewall you can drill a hole and get a rubber grommet that fills the outside of the hole but the inside's open and the cable will go through those are okay but there's always that risk that the rubber wears out or through vibration it cuts through and with that cable you can um, get the sharp edge of the metal so that can be very, very dangerous because it's the main power feed from your vehicle that goes right there. So what I put in was one of these. Obviously this one's black. What is this? This is, um, what's the exact, I can't remember what the exact name of this is, but this is from Fastronics. A bunch of companies make them, but it's a bulkhead connector. So it's got a stud on each side with nuts and washers. The plastic outer casing is what goes through the hole. So you put this through and you have a nut that you put over top of it and then you tighten that down. That way you have an insulated um, plastic from the body 
It's not gonna arc through. It has the metal that passes all the way through, and this is a much safer option. Now you're going, okay, how do I tighten that? Well, if you look at this, it's kinda hard to see. It's got flats on the side of it, so you can get it through, start this by hand, then grab uh, the flats with a wrench, and then start tightening this down with a different wrench. Um, and it works really, really, really good. And it's a much safer option when running through panels. Okay, so we got our cable run underneath the floor up to that bulkhead connector. Now we need to connect it. Now we've got a lot of extra cabling. We don't wanna just wrap it up. That's gonna look terrible. We're gonna cut it to length. Well then once you cut it, you need to put a new end on it. So I've got my cable cut. And then again, this is an area where it doesn't cost that much, but you can spend a little bit of money get pure copper lugs like this. Then with that, you can either need to borrow or buy a crimping tool like this. This, as you can see, the jaws kind of have like a hexagon shape. When you press down on it, it's going to crimp that lug onto the wire, compressing the wires and pushing the lug on there so it doesn't come off, so you have a real solid connection. Probably be better to use a razor blade, but my knife is fairly sharp, which also means that's going to increase the chances of me cutting myself. Okay. You want to make sure you strip the wire back enough. There's plenty of room for this to go on. You want to get all those fibers in there and make sure it seats down nice and tight as you can see there's a little bit of gap there but we'll fix that here in a minute and we'll get our crimping tool fit this in there and then crimp that down see I put a bunch of little dimples in there but it compressed that and that's not going anywhere so that makes a nice solid connection and then take a little bit of heat shrink slip it over heat that up and that will hold that on there all right, <clears throat> it's a new day. Um, unfortunately, with daylight saving time, uh, run out of daylight really quickly. Um, so I had to stop working, spend a couple days to go to work, and now it is really flipping cold outside. Uh, but we're almost done. Got the main power feed all the way up to the engine through the bulkhead connector, got everything else connected. So now, uh, just need to make a couple more connections and then run the ground. That's right, the ground. And then we'll see if it actually works. So let's get to that. All right. You see, I have a proper mess of stuff in the back, but I've got all the cables run. Everything's hooked up other than the battery. Up on the battery, you can see I've got the... They call them marine style connectors, but they go on the top post and they have the studs with the wing nuts. I wanted those easier to disconnect the cables if I needed to, since it's gonna be further back in the trunk, as well as I can also add on circuits to draw power directly from the battery if I need to, or add a better ground. The stud, the stud on the positive is 3 8 and that one's 5 16 so you can't cross up the cables really. Um, so I'm going to hook those up and then we'll crank over and see if she fires. Whew. Alrighty. So put the key in. I'll hear the pump. Volt gauge is working. She's cranking. Hasn't been started in a while. You know, with the fuel injection. Oh. Probably 
my ear in line. Come on. Get the signal. Got oil pressure. Well, I know it wanted to fire a little bit, so let me work on this. All right, I got radio, oil pressure, that's a mechanical gauge. Voltage is reading, she's running. Kind of having to keep my foot on it. I don't know if the Phytech is just not happy. I mean, it is about 30 degrees out. I had to use a little bit of starting fluid. Every time I seem to let off the throttle, to die see if I get a little bit of heat in the motor if that helps but, but at least lets me know that the wiring is correct as you can see I haven't put the interior back together tighten that up a little bit before I'm done still running so that's good I'm gonna show you why don't make my mistake and go with these cheap connectors if you look down in here you can see they just there's just corrosion all on the inside um, started to rust this one was pretty bad and then the cables like I said went with just cheap cables and if you look, just started to corrode and all that inside. This goes all the way down into the cable, which is why the car didn't want to start. It was just drawing so much amperage through these bad cables that it couldn't kick over the starter motor and it couldn't trigger the computer for the fuel injection. So the cutlass is running, um, which is awesome. I gotta put some training fluid in it. There's a leak somewhere that I gotta figure out. Uh, but all in all, the car is running. Huge, huge step. Um, so that means I'm at 100%. All my vehicles are on drive right now. Uh, it's kind of weird for me. But um, hopefully uh, going over how I was moving the battery to the back, uh, gives you a little bit of tips and stuff like that. Like I said, it's really universal. This was, you know, obviously for my specific vehicle, but some of the things we talked about as far as cable selection, connectors, uh, running the cables, things like that, you can use on any vehicle you have. So hopefully that helps you guys out. Uh, we'll keep working on the Cutlass and there'll be more to come. So go out, make something for your vehicle.